Hi everyone. My name is Ashish. I'm a junior doctor working in the UK. On popular request from the subscribers of this channel and from doctors and medical students on Instagram, I have decided to make a series to teach you all artificial intelligence. To learn artificial intelligence, first of all, you will need to learn a programming language, and I feel that Python is one of the best languages to start with. If you are someone who wants to learn artificial intelligence or someone who wants to learn a programming language, then this this series is for you. I will teach Python from the basics and if you are someone who has never written a single line of code in their life, this is the series for you. So we will start with learning Python and then we will learn artificial intelligence and the aim of the series will be to help you learn to create real world products that you can use in healthcare setting. Why Python? I feel that Python is one of the easiest language to learn. It is unlike Java or C++ or C where you have to type a lot. Python is one of the languages which is very much like English and it's very easy to interpret. Also it's easy to learn. The next reason is that you have lots of web development libraries and frameworks like flask and django where you can create real world web applications through python you also have amazing data science libraries like numpy pandas matplotlib seaborn and we will be talking about all these data science libraries so that you can learn statistics and you can learn to analyze data this will be very helpful if you are going for a research project in the future as well the next reason is that there are amazing machine learning libraries like scikit learn and scikit learn is one of the machine learning libraries which is one of the artificial intelligence libraries in simple terms and you also have some deep learning libraries and these are also artificial intelligence libraries and these are keras pytorch and fastai these are the popular ones so where should you code one of the things that you can do is you can go online and you can download python on your computer and then install jupyter notebook and then you can start coding on your computer the next and the recommended platform to use is google collaboratory so i would advise you to just open up google collaboratory make an account which you can do with your google account and then you can easily start coding all right let's start learning python the first thing that you usually do when you start learning a computer programming language is to print a statement and that statement is usually hello world so we will start with learning to print hello world so what i have done here i have written some code and there is this inbuilt function in python which is called print and what you need to do is you need to open and close these rounded brackets and you need to type in a string inside and that string is hello world okay so when you execute this command and the shortcut to execute this command is shift plus enter when you do that you will see that hello world is printed and that is the first thing that you have learned in python the next one is basic mathematical operations with operators now what are operators so operators can be plus minus the division operator the multiplication operator modulo exponentiation equation okay so in the first statement what we are doing is we are performing addition so 1 plus 1 then we are performing subtraction division multiplication then the next operation is modulo that is the remainder so if you divide 10 from 
you can get what the remainder will be using this modulo operator. The next one is exponentiation. So here you can see that two star star or asterisk two to the power of three and that's how you write exponentiation and the next one is equation so let's execute this and then we can see what the outputs are so i'll i will again press shift and enter so for the first one i can see that the addition has been performed for the second one subtraction has been performed the next one is division after that there is multiplication the next one is modulo which is the remainder so you can see that when you divide it divide 10 from 2, you won't have any remainder, so the answer is 0. Exponentiation 2 to the power of 3 is 8. And the last one is equation, where you are confirming whether 1 is equal to 1 or not. So you need to do that by using 2 equal to signs and not just 1. We will talk about what one of the equal to sign is used for in some time. So you can see that it says true and that is 1 is equal to 1. Let's change this to 2 and let's execute this again by pressing shift and enter and you will see that it has turned to false. Right? So we have covered all the basic mathematical operations here. The next one is types of variables. Right? So there are different kinds of variables in Python and these are integers, so they can be 1, 2, 3, minus 2, minus 5. Then you have different kind of variables that are called floating point variables or floats, and these are for real numbers. So you can have 0 0.2, 0 0.001. The next type is strings, and these are just set of characters, and these can be my name like Ashish, Python, or 1, 2, 3. The next one is Booleans. Booleans are true or false values. So these are some different kind of variables and the last ones are complex numbers, right? So these are all the types of variables in Python. Now, we will talk about how you can assign variables and to assign variables, you will use the equal to sign, okay? So on, on to the left of this equal to operator is the name of the variable and to the right of this equal to operator is the value that you need to store in that variable. For example, let's take an example of this one. So a is equal to 0 0.05. So what we are doing is we are creating a variable and then we are giving it a value of 0 0.05. So let's print this value of a. Okay. So we can see that the value of a is 0 0.05. In the same way, we can assign integers to variables. So in the second statement, we are assigning y a value of 112. The next one is we are creating a variable which is called name and we are giving it a string value of Ashish. Okay. In order to give a string value, we need to use single or double quotes. Okay. Now we'll try to print the value of name and you can see that it is Ashish. Now there is one of this next statement where we are creating a variable which is called b and we are giving it a value of 1 2 3. now you will see that this 1 2 3 is integer but if we want to store the value of this 1 2 3 as a string then we will just place it under single or double quotes okay so you can see that this 1, 2, 3 is stored in B and it is stored as string and not as integer. The One of the uh, things that you need to keep in mind is that if you have stored numbers as strings, you won't be able to perform addition or subtraction on those numbers. They will be just stored as characters. The next one is we are creating a val variable which is called C and we are giving it a Boolean value that is true. Okay. And in the next one, we are creating a variable which is called D, but we are using string values and we are assigning the value true to D. So what we will do, we will try to print this value and you can see that the value of D is true. 
and you need to note that this is not a boolean because it is under two double quotes and this is stored as string the next one is k so we are giving it a complex number and we will try to assign this variable k a value that is a complex number okay now we will go towards a real world example so let's calculate bmi so what i am doing i am creating a variable that is called height and i am giving it a value of 1.82 then I'm creating a variable which is called weight. I'm giving it a value of 67. In the next step, I am creating a variable that is called BMI. And then I am defining this formula that is weight divided by height raised to the power of two. And then I am printing the BMI, okay? So what this will do is it will execute all these step by step, all right? So let's try to execute this. So you can see that the value of BMI is 20.22. The next one is to find the type of variable. So you can just use an inbuilt function that is called type and then you have to open and close rounded brackets and you'll have to type the name of the variable. And this will tell you the type of the, the value that is stored in that variable. So let's have a look at A. So we gave A a value of 0.05 initially, and we can see that it is float. In the next step, we will try to find the value of Y, and we can see that we gave it an integer value. So it will be int, that is integer. The next one was name. So we can see that I gave name variable a value of Ashish, and that was a string value. And we can see that it is string, that is str. In the next step, we will try to find what B was. So you can see that B was one, two, three, but in a string format. So it will be a string. The next one was C and we, we assigned a value that was Boolean and we will see what the type of C is. So it will be a bool, that is Boolean value. The next one is D. So you can see that I gave true, but it was in double uh, quotes. So it will be a string again. And the last one is K. So the type of K is complex because it was a complex number, okay? Now, if you need to assign multiple variables, then you can assign a single value to different variables simultaneously. For example, you can just write F is equal to G is equal to H is equal to two. And when we will print all of these values, you can see that each of these is two and we have just used one step to define all these variables and we have assigned the value of two to all of these variables. The next step is deleting variables from memory. So when you create a variable, there is a section of memory that is assigned and then you set a value to that section of memory. But if you just want to clear that section, so what you can do is you can just write DEL, that is delete, and you can write K. So initially we have assigned a complex number to K, but when you will execute this and then you will try to print the value of K, what it will do is it will just throw an error and it will say that error uh, K is not defined because we have just deleted uh, K. The next thing to learn uh, is operations on strings and one of the important one is string concatenation. So what we will do is we will try to define two strings. The one is string one, the next one is string two. Then I have assigned two string values to these. Now what I will do is I will create a new variable that is called my name and I have added these two strings. Okay, so what we will see is I will assign the value of these two strings to my name. Let's try to print my name, okay? So you can see that you have both of these strings combined and it is stored in my name. If you want to make it more readable, then what you can do is you can again assign the value of string one plus an empty space plus string two, and then you can try to print my name again. So I will just Try to execute this and you will see that you you have my name in a more 
readable format and if you will just see uh, the type uh, you will see that the type of my name is string right now i want you to use this command okay uh, i want you to do this string one minus string two and see whether it works or not you can also do string one multiply multiplied by string two and see whether it works or not and i want you to type in the response that you get after executing this command in this comment section of this video so that is all for this video and this was the first lesson towards learning python i hope that you enjoyed it and i will see you soon in the second part of the series thanks a lot for watching i will see you soon